Dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me a great privilege to be part of these sessions and I want to thank my Father and my Holy Spirit that they have been very, very helpful and kind to one and all of us all these days. Warm welcome to this series where we are dealing through this law of uncleanliness and law of uncleanliness as a subject is really detailed. Why? Because we are living in such an unclean world and the ruler of the earth is an unclean person and his name is devil and he's the father of lies and everything that is of unclean in nature, un unrighteous in nature, wicked in nature, evil in nature are not of the father but it is of the devil and uh, that's what you and I need to understand to go through regular introspections and I don't know how how much you are doing that in your life but if you're not involved in any kind of introspections uh, introspective study of yourself it's not about the doctrines I would strongly encourage right? and the best time to introspect is fasting and prayer and that's why it's important at least weekly once you fast and pray dedicating that time, setting aside that time from your work, from your busy schedule. Yeah. Um, now, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't be going to church um, and fast and pray at home, but I would rather say um, you should, if, 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 if the situation demands, for example, you are a busy brother, all six days you have to go to work and the only time you have is Sunday to go to church but then I'm telling you something it may sound odd or it may be sounding a little strange if your mind is not at peace if your heart is not at peace yeah, it's not aligned to the Word of God and you feel you need to cry out to God in a private room and the only time you have a Sunday morning I would say please don't go to church please stay at home spend that four hours in a private room and talk to the Father Obviously, you know what? The heaven will stand up and honor your attitude. Yeah? Because more than being a traditional person of a God requires us to be very honest and blameless before Him. Right? More than the tradition demanding us of our attendance, the Father in heaven um, not, not demands, but He expects us to be very open and honest yeah, to him. And if that requires you to skip the church a week and then stay on the feet of the Lord, which anyway you guys are doing, right? Pandemic situation, many people don't attend either online service or offline service. Therefore, uh, no big deal. Yeah, when pandemic situation forces, yeah, that's all good. But then when your heart forces, you're saying, oh, not all good. You are judged by the tradition. Who's teaching all of this? Yeah, it's, it's the forefathers who kicked off all of these and I don't think you should go and honor anybody's doctrine other than the doctrine of your heart and which is being completely governed and managed by the Holy Spirit. Hopefully, your spirit is governed by the Holy Spirit and you get these kind of thoughts and conscience. Actually, you know what? That's a good indication. If you get these kind of thoughts and conscience, oh, that is the need that I need to spend on the feet of my father to talk about me, myself. And I have these many shortcomings. I need to go and fix. I need to go and repent. I need to go and ask for forgiveness. And I need to confess. I need to reconcile. Therefore, the Holy Spirit moves in my life freely. And therefore, the connectivity which I had lost with the Father, the association of the holy angels and the Holy Spirit and all, the, all those things which I had lost, I will. it will be restored back to me and I will receive it back. You, you have that attitude, that conscience. I'm telling you, brother, Holy Spirit is pretty much inside of you. Yeah, you are the man of God and you are the classic example uh, for who walks in the spirit or being led by the spirit. Feel proud of you and don't be bothered and don't feel this condemnation, man's condemnation or, you know, the forefathers' traditional condemnation. Just set aside. Uh, don't, don't be impolite to anyone, but you need not explain it either because you are convinced of who you are. All right. So warm welcome again to the series of this law of uncleanliness. And 
we had been dealing from the book of romans chapter 14 and uh, i was almost getting to close but i couldn't finish romans 14 um one to uh 14 i think one to, sorry one to 17 i think we we have done that study together um which talks pretty much about the law of liberty and the law of love law of liberty we have already spoken i will not get there but then just a quick sneak peek of what we had discussed there is in the name of liberty the whole world does anything and everything that they are allowed to do what they are allowed to do anything other than murdering other than bloodshed other than taking your rifle and firing at 20 people yeah because why you're going to be judged by the law of the land and the government of any land is really concerned about violence right and uh, violence is not going to be tolerated anywhere mob gathering because it becomes a law and order problem and the national problem international problem and their business is impacted um and the investors will back off for example in a place like afghanistan where you see that recently talibans have gone and conquered when the american troops moved out every everyone knows this right i'm not the first one to disclose this you all know and what happens is you think any investors go there because they don't have enough a government there the government itself is completely ransacked and taken over by talibans and what would be that so no nation would 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 want to get in there therefore they are disturbed to preserve their business economy and of course the citizens and therefore they immediately come and pounce on you if if anything you do that disturbs the law and order and that also not out of care oh they want to teach you something good they want to get you on the better side etc yes the law demands correction but then it's not out of love but it's out of preserving their economy their social status and etc but bible is absolutely on the opposite side the but the law and the bible condemns you according to the old testament especially and the new testament tells you how you are going to be condemned in the in the white throne judgment and in the judgment day but both of these are to get you to a better place the best place the city of god that is the paradise in heaven and not just that while you live on earth you can already feel heaven and you can taste the love of god through the sufferings that you go through but all that you suffer the days of the affliction you are going to see yeah the days of joy and the days of um peace that are ahead of you but even otherwise also you will not feel that you lack in god's presence or you lack Uh, for lack of joy and something like that right you you feel heaven on earth and that's a clear indication of a person another indication i'm giving you that you are already adhering in the laws of cleanliness right so if you are that person who's feeling that you are already having heaven on earth yeah you're already feeling the presence of god always overwhelming you always feel the presence of god always um talking to you you are the person who also walks in liberty yeah uh, as far as your spiritual deeds are concerned yeah you're spiritually liberalized but then you don't misuse the liberty given to you in the name of our lord and savior jesus in the name of the grace in the name of you see all of these happening in the pentecostal circles right there are the multiple various dances right for example in india bharatanatyam is very famous in western countries rock uh, music and uh, the, what is it break dance that rock pop pop dances and all this jazz dance and all this is popular there is also something called as freestyle dance you know what it's a mix of it's a cosmopolitan culture kind of thing right mix of every culture mix of every steps and everything you can dance anything you want freely and many people are preferring that why because there is no rules regulations there is no perfect law and order there is no judging nothing that right? you can freely dance it's the name itself is freestyle dance there are many freestyle dancers in the pentecostal circles and in the christian circles and in, among the christendom i'm not only finger pointing at pentecost right all the congregations and 
I will tell you, if I were to draw a diamond and the top portion, that will be the saints of God, very few people, and the bottom portion, extremely cruel within the Christendom, within the believers community, I'm talking through this, right? Majority of them, the middle portion of the diamond, majority of the vast area covers the middle portion, covers the vast area. Vast of the, the majority of the Christendom is going to fall in the like freestyle dancers. They are <laughs> belonging neither to this side nor that side. And uh, <laughs> they don't like condemnation. They don't like strict corrections. They don't like reproof in the install, in installation of instilling reproof and corrections. They don't like people talking to them, even a little bit strict about the word of God. Hey, word of God talks to you about sin, no sin. They don't want to hear anything. Because why? They are completely blindfolded under this concept of grace. According to their definition, grace means something like this, right? Anything and everything you can do, meaning you can live in, you can be a lesbian, you can be a homosexual, and you can do anything. Grace is there to forgive you the day you realize it is a sin. First of all, they don't even call this one-six marriage as a sin. It's been legalized in Catholic circles. Catholic churches can conduct the one-six marriage approved by Mr. Pope. And then what do you call these people as? Freestyle dancers. Okay, on this, this side of the charismatics and Pentecost and all the spiritual guys, they are more into condemnation. Yeah, they finger point, they judge people. Well, whereas, I mean, the Pharisees, the spirit of Pharisees, and they are equally bad compared to what I had told you initially. Yeah, so this is the problem in Christendom, and this is what they call it as law of liberty, and it works for good and it doesn't work for good. So we have discussed this pretty much. Now we are stuck with this law of love, right? And all these are connected to uh, the law of, law of uncleanliness uh, subject, what we are discussing, right? Uh, we are not deviating. We are not going any further from here. And I already, I told, uh, I think we discussed on 14, 15, 16, and 17, for the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get in the explanation previous to previous sessions all the three four last three four sessions we have explained very clearly on this right by food you cannot discriminate your brother by food you cannot judge by by looks our external outlook external appearance you cannot judge a person and that is the problem in christendom if i if i look at it correctly yeah uh, and you will also be able to understand this if you were to go through in that route uh, yeah i know I'm more convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. I'm reading everything from beginning, but I'm not going to explain because it's explained in the previous session already. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you're no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Using food as a reason, hey, please don't deprive his soul or, you know, abandon his soul. And therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Yeah? For the kingdom of God is not food and drink. The righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit is what it is. We, we should be focused. And today we will cover verse 18 to 23. And if time permits, we will continue with our discussion. We have a long way to go. That's why I just, you know, stretched it a bit. Long way to go. And uh, we have a lot of things to cover. So we will do it together. <clears throat> For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. What are these things? I have been telling you already, right? You're going to be not judged by the law, but you're going to be judged by the spirit. You're not going to be led by the law, but you're going to be led by the spirit. But then the thin line of difference, the spirit also abides in laws and commandments. Yeah. Revelation 20 to 14, blessed are those who abide in the laws and commandments. It's not that even Jesus told this, I did not <clears throat> come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it and elevate it to the next level. And when Jesus is ready to honor the law, uh, who, 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 who is men? Who are, I mean, who is man or who are men to withstand against Jesus and say that, hey, Jesus, you are not right. Huh? We are right. Is it what you're trying to say? 
many people rebel against the voice of the holy spirit who speaks absolutely from the scriptures john 14:26 says he brings to our remembrance all that jesus taught which means they are written in the scriptures they are written in the holy bible which means the laws and commandments he is going to remind you he is going to get you there but not without you having read the bible not without you having understood in fact he has nothing to remind if you have not read the bible if you have not understood probably you are belonging to someone else you don't belong to god that's why reading bible many people say read bible read bible do, do they explain why you need to read bible you don't read bible you are a big void in front of the holy spirit the holy spirit cannot live in you first of all and secondly even if he is willing to help you he is not able to help you he is handicapped and he is not seeing anything inside of you it's empty imagine you are not being taught anything of your subjects but they ask you to go and appear for an examination and then they give you the question paper the question paper sounds like a newspaper doesn't it a newspaper everything is a news right you understand it or not, you understand it or not you like it or not uh whether you expect it or not it is a news news man okay fine you just glance it through and then you have a cup of coffee and then you get to your toilet and get ready and go go to work it doesn't really matter does it disturb you does it get you any distinction does it get get you any kind of certification nothing some people know they are not being coached but they end up in an examination the question paper looks like a newspaper that is the same situation for a believer in christ who is not grounded and rooted in the word of god that is the same situation for the holy spirit who works with such people he will also see them blind because the guy is blind and void why did i say that i said that because for he who serves christ in these things when are you acceptable to god he is acceptable to god and approved by men when are you acceptable to god not before you have read the word of god and accepted and approved the laws and commandments to travel through you you, you know god requires your approval because why i told you right it's law of liberty it's free will and god doesn't enforce or emphasize anything and therefore you are grounded and rooted in the word of god and you approve of these things which the bible demands of you changes in you and then yes god says yeah he you, you are acceptable to me and therefore you are ready to serve christ which means what serving his people people who want who are very much keen in entering into ministry and all that be very mindful of romans 14 18 huh? and this is the key more than anything it's this is important for you verse 19 therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another i think these verses i have spoken already in the previous session but i'm just touching upon because it's nice to revise very quickly right edification do not destroy edification is you know the better tense of admonishing one another but then you do it out of mere kindness from your heart yeah do not destroy the work of god for the sake of food all things indeed are pure but it is evil for the man who eats with offense it's not to be literally taken from the sense of eating some food but then it is also to be understood when a person who belongs to other doctrine other religion other culture yeah other gender whatever you don't call them as impure because they are all creations of god which god had ordained which god had created shall be honored and accepted by every one of us is pure but it doesn't mean to say that you got to be influenced by their culture traditions like king solomon who went on the other side right he married all the wives belonging to edomites egyptian culture so sodomites and um yeah uh, what is ammonites and sidon sidonites and all this ites right they we went outside the box and god clearly said canaanites you shall not marry but he you know even before building the temple of god he married the pharaoh's daughter how dare yet god was patient he gave him an opportunity but the guy never changed yeah and that's what you need to always be watching for and pursue the things 
which are made for peace and things by which one may another do not destroy the work of god for the sake of food yeah, all things indeed are pure but do not get influenced is what i'm saying verse no 21 it is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak this i've explained in the previous session i'm skipping this do you have faith have it to yourself before god happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves yeah no condemnation this also i've explained and i already told you at the beginning of this session right the people who are too deep and far in the charismatics and all that they are the ones who frequently get into the uh, mode of you know condemning somebody and that doesn't sound like a you know good doctrinal teaching and really you should be mindful of this and that's exactly my point uh, tonight wherever you are right you got to be mindful of this your mind full of condemnation then yes your 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 body is full of evil spirit <laughs> your mind is full of forgiveness peace love joy righteousness and tender mercies and this and that then yeah you read uh, the crew you want to say um, new creation you are a new for ex- i will tell you colossians chapter 3 uh, character of a new man verses 12 to 17 if you take and read you will understand who you are yeah we did that study in uh, in the other session other series anyway all right so but he who doubts is condemned of if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin how many of you have understood right we completed this even in the previous session but then i just did a quick recap why because it's nice always to recap because we will be continuing with our conversation so here if you see Roman 14 says all things are clean that is because there is a new age a new dispensation it signals that god has done something new whenever god prescribes something new to eat he is doing it in relationship to a covenant the covenant of blood you can read in hebrews 10:26 to 29 he is doing it in relation to a change that bears upon his relationship with men and food is often the test today right whether a certain kind of food was eaten or, or not eaten was a critical issue in the old new testament sorry not only the issue between the jews and gentiles but it was the issue that had to do with gentile christians um who were going to eat at the home of pagan neighbor right gentile christians also had the problem jewish christians also had the problem with the gentile so everywhere the discrimination comes predominantly from the perspective of um you know uh, the food and that's where uh, you know paul sees a major problem and he dedicated a chapter poor paul no how much of difficulty <laughs> to coach these guys <laughs> not at all easy you know that's the mark of the leadership especially christian leadership oh you should see the versatility in this paul amazing amazing all right now but it was also the issue that had to do with gentle christians right and in the old testament the ignorance was never you know kind of a bliss because the sacrifices for the sin and guilt offerings were for sins you do not know you committed at that time you may have sat down at your neighbor's table and had what you thought was beef stew for example but later you discovered it was pig stew or a pig sandwich <laughs> Yeah, have any of you have gone through this experience? At least I haven't. Why? Because I'm very, very careful in what I eat. I asked him twice, sometimes thrice, or more than that. <laughs> When I had been to Europe, I was very careful because there, pig sandwich is absolutely common. But not that I'm a very traditional guy and all that, but I always got reminded of Leviticus 11. And when God says something, I would like to respect. I won't condemn anybody, but I would like to respect. That's my choice, and I made a choice to respect and not eat that, uh, you know, pig sandwich. And uh, I, every restaurant I go, I used to <laughs> end up asking them, "Hey, this is pork." And to my surprise, they would say, "Yeah, yeah, it is, it is." And they thought I like pork, and I would say, "Please take this off and give me 
something else, um, chicken or something. And they would say, they would be very surprised. Oh, you don't like this, is it? Because that's considered as one of the tastiest dish. And uh, <laughs> and uh, one of my colleague who was with me was a German person uh, by citizen uh, by citizenship and birth. And he was quite surprised. And I, when I was explaining from scriptures, the guy was absolutely going mad, berserk. And he said, stop it. Uh, please, uh, let's let's change the subject because they don't like Bible. Then I understood what kind of spirit he had and yet he is my, he's not my enemy. Uh, yeah, I loved him and I pray for him. Then you were a sinner and you had to, you know, kind of take care of it. The olden days belief, right? Because you end up eating something else. Paul says, if you go to your neighbor's house and don't ask them what they are serving, if they don't tell you, what they are serving, don't ask. Eat it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, according to him, according to his standards. And that's, that's that's something I like, right? But I didn't go to neighbor's house. I went to a restaurant. And when I go to neighbor's house or anybody who are known to me, they call me. I would ask. I would already tell them up front. See, again, I'm a very diet conscious person. For me, it works that way. I tell them, hey, you know what? You're going to cook just one dish. Just one side dish, enough. And anything you cook more than that, it's not that I don't like, but my tummy doesn't allow me. It doesn't cooperate well. And uh, I'm on kind of diet and I feel good that way. And I don't end up in acidity and all that. Uh, and with all due respect, politely I tell them. And yet they would be <laughs> making more than one or two. And I would, not to offend them, I would pick one from here and one from there. And I would say, absolutely cool, chill out. Come, let's talk. And I'll make them comfortable. Yeah, this is what I learned from Paul. Paul was a kind of a person uh, who is always very, very gentle and nice, polite. And yeah, he knows how to influence people. And he said, I have to a Greek, I'm a Greek man. To a Jew, Roman, I'm a, Ru, a Roman. To a Jew, I'm a Jew. I know how to take people on my side. That's the influencing character you need to learn from Paul. Yeah, if you're a person who is abiding in the law of cleanliness, the primary character that will be uh, put to test is the, um, you know, the influencing character, but you do it politely and gently. Some people influence, but they do it really in rough, rough way. You know, brother, you don't accept Bible, you go to hell for sure. That's the way how I was talking, maybe two and a half decades ago. <laughs> but then in quickly I learned, in a matter of a year or two I learned. And then also I was making mistakes, plenty of mistakes. I lost many of my good friends just because I brought in this, cross and Bible and this and that very sharply. It's not that I shouldn't be, but with all due respect, I should be talking. It's the way how Jesus spoke. It's the way how Paul spoke. But he spoke very roughly, very rude, very sharp to the people who accepted Jesus and yet they were sinning. For example, when he writes letter to Corinth, all the, both the letters were very sharp. Absolutely. And when Jesus writes the letter to all the seven churches, very sharp. He calls them as like a vomit. I will spew you out of my mouth, man. Rubbish. This is how he spoke, which is good. Matthew 23, very sharp. He spoke to the Pharisees. You teachers, how dare you could talk like this? How, how dare you could behave like this? Unbelievable, man. And Jesus was definitely not ready to spare any of these guys. Why? Because they are going to be judged more than the others. The more it is given, the more you're going to be judged. And that's why this law of uncleanliness plays a key role, giving you the visibility, the areas where you're unclean and get to the side of cleanliness, man. You could fix it here on earth. And if they tell you this, yeah, uh, this has been sacrificed to an idol, then you can't eat it because your neighbor obviously thinks that it is important that it wouldn't have mattered to you. Yeah, this is another, see, I'm just recapping what Paul is trying to say in Romans 14. And uh, this is the second level of recap. Why? Because Romans 14 is quite important, quite important. Yeah, you, you need to understand this. Uh, Romans 14 is one of the important chapters which reveals to you how to gently ignore and how to how gently to accept, um, you know, things or how gently you could deal with heathens. How gently to deal with Gentiles. Yeah. See, we ourselves are Gentiles, but then 
whoever have not accepted Christ, they are the real Gentiles, actually speaking. But if you accepted Christ, you are a believer. That's it. No distinction. No distinction between a believer, a Jewish believer, oh, a Catholic believer, nothing like that. You are a believer. That's it. Yeah, forget the past. That's what he's trying to convey in Romans 14. But then <clears throat> that food example I'm taking again, right? You can you can connect it with any of any other example, any other habit, any other circumstances, any other uh, you, any other cases you can you can correlate yeah but just taking food as an example because Romans 14 is talking pretty much of food yeah you went for 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 dinner neighbors home they are belonging to a different religion and then they set certain food to eat and all that yeah if they speak nothing you ask nothing you eat it but then if they speak something you know brother where we have got it we have got it from this place which is known for this goddess ah very special in Tamil, uh, sorry, in uh, in uh, India, they call it as prasadam, prasad, uh, prasadam, meaning what? Whatever they have dedicated to their gods and goddesses and they set it right before you. Paul says, hey, you know what? Knowingly, you cannot touch it. Why? Because if you touch and you eat, you're conveying two things there. Number one, you're not condemning, you're not condemning them because Bible doesn't allow you to condemn, which is fine. Secondly, you're accepting their doctrine, their philosophy, their belief without any objection and that is not allowed. Why? Because you're compromising on this doctrine, Philippians 2, 10 and 11, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord and he is the life and the way and the truth. He is the way to the kingdom. Without him, there is no truth. Without him, there is no life. Life means what? The second life after death, eternal life. And this is where you need to be gentle and polite to say no, yet explain your beliefs. Yeah, If there is a situation like this, how do you think you're going to react? How do you think Paul would have reacted? I will tell you what Paul would have reacted. We will just enact a little drama here, right? And the neighbor is saying, hey, this is from this temple and that is from this goddess and that is from this place and that is from this, uh, you know, uh, this is from Ephesus, this is from... Ephesus, there, Diana, goddess Diana. This is from God of Molech. And this is that <clears throat> God, Ashtaroth. And you all know this, right? Dag Dogen, God. They, these are all like pagan gods name. And imagine they are all setting this four or five foots right in front of Paul uh, from each of these temples and places of worship, pagan worship and uh, all this. What do you think Paul would have done? Paul would not touch or eat. That's for sure, because Paul himself said, hey, after knowing I cannot do this, right? But he's going to convey something politely. Hey, great. These are your gods and goddesses. Wonderful. But then, unfortunately, hey, you know what? Don't feel bad. Oh. My doctrine says something different, and my doctrine doesn't allow to touch these foods. And uh, it's abomination according to my doctrine. Why? Because my God says he's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, which means he's the God over your gods. He is the Lord over your lords. And uh, that's the doctrine I'm believing. But then, hey, don't feel bad. I'm not condemning you. I'm not saying your God is big and my God is small. But my doctrine, as much as I respect your belief, please, I want you to respect my belief too. But then let's not debate whose God is bigger, whose God is smaller. But you spoke about your God. Can I talk a bit about my God? Can I speak a bit about this Jesus whom I believe? You know what he is? You know who he was? You know what he did on the cross? You know what is that blood? You, know, you all know that he was crucified and he was bed bruised. You know why he went through all of that? Do you know what is Genesis 3.15? In the beginning, the sin entered the world. You know Adam and Eve's story, right? All these things. Slowly I'll be a storyteller. And then I would try to influence them. And you know what? I wouldn't pull them by hand, force, and come, let's get water baptized. Not like that. But you know what? I leave the home gently and I would ask him, is there any other food that I could eat? And I'm going to eat pretty full. I'm very hungry. Come on. You have any other food? I would be still very friendly. You know, Paul, this is the way how he would deal. He would be still very friendly. He would be still very gentle. And he would not offend. At the same time, he would not compromise on his spiritual doctrines and spiritual values and spiritual priorities. Yeah. And they're going to obviously, and you know what, I, I will tell you what, people who are of different religion, unbelievers, 
I've seen them, nine out of 10 people, they respect God, any God. And you know what? I've seen many of the people who belong in different religion uh, in their room where they have keep other gods and goddesses idols. They keep Jesus idol. They keep Mother Mary idol. They will keep St. Anthony idol or they'll keep all the idol because to them, all God is God. And they have such a great respect for God. Oh my goodness, the piety for their gods and goddesses. I will tell you what I feel always shameful of me when I enter into a pagan night home and come out. Yeah, and I love them for this reason. And they are God's children too, right? They are no different and they are not unclean before God. Yeah, their habits are unclean, but they are clean. Why? Because they still carry the image of God as long as they live on earth. The spirit of God is in them. The soul of God, which is immortal, is in them. And that's the way how I look at the people of God and all other people of God. Yeah. I have a tremendous respect for people of other religion, um, unbelievers especially. What a piety, what a piety. I'm amazing. Yeah. And this is the way how Paul would have dealt with that same situation instead of turning it nasty, ugly, and how dare you. If, if there was a rabbi, if there was a Pharisee, imagine. First of all, they won't enter into the house. And even after entering, if they discover, oh, blasphemy, they would be tearing off their coats and clothes and they'll be ripping off their own beard and they'll be running out of the home naked and bleeding. <laughs> and people will be wondering, hey, who hurt you? And the rabbi would say, I hurt myself, oh, blaspheme and all that. Bunch of spiritual idiots. This is not the way you should behave is what Paul is teaching us in the name of liberty, in the name of your piety for God and your you cannot show that aggressiveness to hurt another human being. At the same time, Never be the compromises of your spiritual doctrines taught to you by God. And that's the covenant of blood in Jesus' name. Yes? What a balanced conversation, isn't it? I just enacted a little drama here, a little, little bit of drama. Yeah, if Paul was there, absolutely this is how he's going to behave. And the same circumstance could happen many, many times when I used to, I'm in corporate still, I'm still a working individual and I'm part-time minister too. People go to some place and sacred place and they come and give that prasad or something. You know what I do? With all due respect, I take the prasad and I'll be keeping in my hands. And they'll be saying, hey, uh, sir, eat, please eat it and all that. I, I would say, hey, you know what? Just now I had my coffee, man. I'm feeling somewhat uneasy. And I would take a piece of paper, clean paper, and I will be placing this food or prasad on that. And uh, I'll be talking to him casually. Hey, you went there. Oh, what is this temple? And this and that. I'll be I'll be kind of uh, inquiring. And once the person leaves the place, with all due respect, I'll be folding the paper. And I will be taking it secretly, ensuring that the person doesn't notice me. And I'll be dropping it somewhere. Why a rabbit in a paper is, I don't want that to be spot in a dustbin. Um, and and. For some reasons, if the person sees the dustbin and he spots that prasad, oh my goodness, I can't imagine the hurt. I can't imagine the hurt. Sorry, I'm not dare enough to hurt somebody like that, insult somebody like that. And therefore, I would, with all due respect, fold it in a piece of paper and I would drop it there, simply like that. I've done that all my tenure and I'm trust me, not a single unbeliever would have noticed I, because I would be very careful, very careful in doing that. What it shows is we are not given that authority to disrespect anybody. We are not given that authority to hurt anybody's sentiments or feelings. Jesus never did that. Paul never did that. Who are you and me? This is actually part of this law of uncleanliness. If you are into this habit of always being really rough at people and you know who you are. This is how the Pharisees believe, uh, behaved. That's why, you know, Jesus was always against them. Not once he spared them, right? Always. Get lost. What do you hypocrites? This is what he says. All right. So this was a little bit of study example on what Paul has done. So when we get to the New Testament and the issue of whether or not a Christian ought to eat this meat or not eat that food or it's not a matter of black or white, but it is the matter of yes or no, and the decision you make, and no, if it is the decision, then stick to it. Yeah, but then convey your no in a way that is not offensive, that doesn't 
tear people rip them apart and then yeah you lose a soul that's that's all that's it that's the that's the outcome right you lose that soul you lose that opportunity to redeem that person and as much as i inquire of the person from where he brought that sacred food and all that i will also share certain examples hey you know what in, in our church also right we do this communion man and yeah i can understand what it feels like communion sir what it is and then i explain the blood of christ and all that i do that in 2 3 minutes that's it quickly i bolt it into his brains and i continue to pray for that guy and god will do that miracle you know i'm going to close in a couple of minutes it's a matter of personal conviction brother that's all i'm trying to say the christian there may eat it freely knowing that god has given him all things to eat there are others however who have different you know doctrines and reasons if they cannot eat in good conscience they should not eat according to paul but if i can eat in good conscience but i cause a weaker brother to go ahead and eat and defile his conscience then it is sin yeah Th- that is another uh, uh topic that i want to quickly tell you if paul had some of his disciples there and the disciples are um basically very feeble who are not ready to accept this doctrine paul is not going to touch whatever i told you before he is going to exactly talk the same way but then if paul was all alone paul says you know what food is a food through food evil spirit cannot travel into my heart into my body forget it give me the food ah come let's enjoy eat <laughs> this this is the real character of paul <laughs> right I, i don't discriminate uncleanliness and cleanliness in the name of food man it doesn't matter but then i will check my law right whether it's allowed or not and uh, then i go because why by my conscience is disturbing leviticus 11 i have read it in and out but my conscience doesn't allow me to eat uh, you know the pig sandwich therefore i'll be mindful of those but then other than that any food or oh, you you have dedicated to god as diana is it okay give me no problem because why i don't believe the through food the evil spirit is going to travel into my conscience without my approval without my decision without my authority and approval it is not going to travel paul is that kind of guy but then if he has a weak brother if he has a weak disciple he's going not going to do that that's exactly what he's saying that's what i am also trying to tell you right your belief doesn't matter you may be strong but then your brother is feeble therefore don't take him to those places or even if you take him then watch how you are behaving first which shouldn't be a stumbling block if i can eat in good conscience then i go ahead and eat but if my brother is weak conscience i am not eating it the old testament did not leave room for convictions the new testament does leave enough room for convictions it is the work of god that is written in our hearts and it is the work of the spirit inside that guides us as we make these kind of decisions i would like to stop there yeah because i want to start from romans 14 and then i want to continue we will continue from where we have left my time is up heavenly father we want to thank you for this beautiful time of explanation preaching and teaching we appreciate your love grace mercy thank you lord please lead us by this doctrine may the law of cleanliness abide in us and may we move far away from this law of uncleanliness in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists videos share it with your friends relatives and be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his holy word and please remember us uh, our ministries in your prayers always and the one favorite that i ask all always from you is 10 seconds every day pray for me god bless you amen